people! Welcome to the Stitch People Podcast. I'm Lizzie Bean, your host and the founder of Stitch People, where our goal with cross-stitching is to inspire your personal creativity, and our goal with podcasting is to help you make some new friends while you're at it. Today's episode is so much fun, and I think those of you especially who do commissioned portraits are going to learn a lot from this episode. We talk to Abby, and by we, I mean me, I talk to Abby, and she tells us about her background in communications for her day job and how that translates into her making custom portraits for for clients and customers. And we also, of course, dig into her family life and the kinds of things she likes to do and listen to while she's stitching. And it's just such a fun conversation and this time flew by. So I hope you enjoy my conversation with Abby. Hello, Abby. Welcome to the Stitch People podcast. Thank you so much for being here today. It's a pleasure to see you in person. <laughs> you too. It's so exciting. Well, more or less in person, I guess. But yeah, I, it's fun. It's great to connect in a way that's a little bit one step more real than, you know, just a like or a comment on the <laughs> Stitch People community. Uh, tell me, how long have you been a part of the Stitch People community? It will be... It's been three years awesome. since I got the book. Um, almost well before I think in August. So I guess okay, it's three. Awesome, that's great. And were you a cross stitcher before stumbling across Stitch People? Tell me your journey, your cross stitching journey. <laughs> so um, the very first thing I ever remember cross stitching was I was probably six or seven, maybe. And it was one of those like little plastic Christmas ornaments that oh, like comes yeah. in a whole little kit. And um, I'm not very religious, but it was a Jesus and Mary and Aww. like nativity scene. Love it. And I just remember stitching the little Joseph and the little Mary. And my mom taught me because she was a cross stitcher from right, right. way back. So, and then I put it down for a really long time and I didn't, I didn't do it. And then, um, my grandmother passed away mm. and she had had a table runner that was like a stamped um, cross stitch mm -hmm. that she never finished. So I said, well, I have to finish it for her. So she didn't Aww. get to finish it. So I did that. And then I decided to make my husband a college graduation gift. And then I just kept going. It was Mario themed. It's awesome. My favorite. So, and then did you do I the Mario kind of pattern control. yourself or did you find it like on Etsy or something? I found it on Etsy. Okay. I, I was going to say just because the um, that old school video game style with the 8-bit pixel, whatever, mm -hmm. lends itself really well to cross-stitching. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty fun. easy to bring it over. But yeah. yeah, and then I just kind of, I like dabbled in so many different crafts. And this is the one that I always come back to. I mm. always come back to cross-stitch. And so I've been pretty... For like three years now, it's pretty much all I've done craft wise. I so. love that. I love it so much. Okay, well, we're getting the overview, so I'm just gonna jump right into: Do you do any other crafts besides cross stitching, or are you kind of a cross stitch purist? Now, pretty much a cross stitch purist. <laughs> I um, I sewed for a while. Okay. Um, not a great sewer. Quilts I have or built... quilts or quilts. I've done a few okay. quilts. Um. Made a really great trash can for my car. Well, <laughs> um, but I, to me, um, the thing I like about cross stitch is that you can kind of do it anywhere. You can mm. sit in a room with people like your my husband, for example, and I can watch TV and do it. Mm -hmm. When I was sewing, I had to like go to a separate room and I was away and we oh, yeah. both work full time jobs that it's like, we don't have a ton of time together anyway. So yeah. it's kind of nice to do something that I can be around others to do. So totally. Otherwise I have absolutely no artistic talent. I cannot paint. <laughs> I, um, yeah. So, I mean, I made a cake for my daughter's birthday, if that's a craft, but well it's... done. Hey, I think if you can find it at a craft store, it's considered a craft. I know that that's like true. Joanne's and I think Michael's has like, you know, cake decorating and, there's a section for it. So <laughs> I so, think yeah. it counts. <laughs> That's about where it ends. I just, like I said, I'm really, I just love cross stitching right now. And it's really, it's just something that I just really enjoy doing. And it, um, 
like I said, it's nice. You can be around other people and do it. You can yeah. take it on vacations. It's, you know, it's just simple and easy. Right. Super way. portable. And and a low barrier to entry as far as like, like I feel like I've always wanted to make a nice quilt. I I haven't really. I made a couple quilt squares when I was like a teenager or something. But I feel like quilting is really dependent on having really good tools, having a good machine, having, I mean, I don't think you need them, but I'm sure it helps to have like, you know, those nice like plastic edges and things where you can trace easily. Everything's consistent. So there's kind of an upfront investment. And then it's like, well, if you don't really like it, you have all this stuff. And like you said, you kind of have to set it up and do that at like the table or a big desk. Like it, it's not, I don't know, it's, it's uh, cumbersome to, to get into it versus, you know, cross stitching. You just need like a tote bag and some skeins of floss and like fabric and a needle and you go. It's pretty great. Right. I love yes, it. Yes, I totally agree. <laughs> Preaching to the choir here, but yeah. uh, tell us a little bit about your family. So I am a um, wife. Uh, we've been married for uh, six years and we were together for six before that. So oh, be nice. 12 years we've been together. And then I have two little girls. I have oh. a five-year-old who just turned five and a two and a half year old. So they keep, he's very busy. <laughs> um, <laughs> High energy, and, I'm sure. Yes, very. And I have a really nice, great extended family too. My, I'm oh, close with that. my parents and his parents and everything. So, but at oh, home, it's lovely. just us four and we stay busy. <laughs> that's uh, That was my family growing up, mom, dad, and just me and my sister. I was the younger of the two of us by, about, by three years. For us, it's three, uh, three years in a month. So uh, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a nice little family unit can confirm <laughs> two girls. Tell me that, tell me that you'll like that. They'll like each other in a few years, right? Yeah. More than a few years. Okay. <laughs> Do you like her now? <laughs> oh yes. We get along. Okay, great. Good. Someday they'll uh, like each other. <laughs> someday. Some, I mean, it's hard. It's hard when you're both girls and when you're that close I always said, my theory is, and I'll be curious if anybody in the listeners, whatever, has a similar opinion. My theory is that if you're two years apart or four years apart, it's a little easier than being three years apart. Because when you're two years apart, like a 10 and a 12-year-old, 12 and a 14-year-old, it's like you're close enough to be a little bit more like peers as friends. Four years is far enough for the older one to feel a little maternal about the younger one because it's like pretty significant but that three year it's like neither here nor there <laughs> so it's like you know the difference between 10 year old and a 13 year old is like that's kind of a lot 13 and 16 so those uh I would say you know when my sister hit maybe like nine or ten through the teenage through high school it was oh, was hard just for that exact reason where like I really wanted to keep up and looking back I just was not <laughs> It's just not there. You know what I mean? But then when we got into college and you get a little more independent and it's like you're more confident in who you are and you don't need like the sibling association for your identity, that really, that helped. So when the older well, one graduates, you'll be in the clear. <laughs> perfect. I'll just keep waiting. I guess I'll just uh, keep hard. waiting and waiting. <laughs> waiting and waiting and waiting. Oh my goodness. Oh, well, I'm, I'm sure your patience has, uh, has increased tenfold since being a mother. It sounds like it's a prerequisite a little bit. <laughs> I sure try. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sure you do great. Um, it sounds like you said your mom taught you how to cross stitch when you were younger. So does artsiness, craftsiness, anything like that, handmaking, does that run in your family or are you sort of the sole torchbearer of that now? You know, it's really funny because my mom crochets beautifully. She Ooh. makes um, blankets and uh, little, like the little stuffed animals that are crocheted. Oh, yeah. She's just, she's just amazing at it. Um, and she used to cross stitch and mm. she can sew, but I don't know where she learned any of it because my grandma is not crafty really? I mean she, she's really um not not that I can really remember I mean she's still living and I don't ever really remember her being super crafty she mm. used I remember she used to do these weird things where um it was like a layered picture where like you take like different pieces of a picture and you'd like glue them and they layer up and she used oh, to cool. do that with like her girlfriend but I so I guess she is a little crafty but I don't know where my mom got her 
extreme talent for crocheting or even learning how to cross stitch. So yeah, I mean, I, and then it's me and I, I would call myself more crafty than my mom. Even I have always liked crafting and DIY and all that kind of stuff. So, um, and I'm hoping my kids are, but they're too crazy to learn right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, and a little young. It's like they just want to color outside the lines and be, right. <laughs> you know, be fun and, and wild. Oh, Spencer just brought me a drink. <gasps> yes. <laughs> what a guy. What a guy. Husband points. Thanks, Spence. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. It sounds like, too, that maybe between your mom and then you uh, – that as your girls get a little bit older, that maybe that's something that is hopefully a little bit just sort of inherent in uh, in what they'll be interested in too. So I hope so. I hope do they so. show interest? You know, when you're stitching and they're around and yeah, my five year old, we have a little kit that we haven't pulled out yet, but it's just this little tiny penguin kit. She really Cute. wants to stitch it with me, but she really sits for about two seconds before she's busy and wants to run away. So <laughs> it's hard for me to, to even get it out. And right. but by the time we would start, she'd be done. So, you know, she does, she is interested. Uh, the two and a half year old just wants to take all of my bobbins and just take all the floss off just all the time. So I wonder you know, if there's a way you could reverse engineer that impulse and have her just want to twist them all up and then you can send her great. to my house mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'll say, no, I'll be keeping bob- her here. <laughs> bob and stitches. I literally, I've been working on, um, I don't know the timing of this being released, but I'm working right now on our little gingerbread pattern for the, uh, the holiday jingle it here 2021, uh, November 21. And I keep, I have a really hard time. I don't know about you, but when I have like a fresh skein, I know there is a rhyme or reason and I can never remember which end you can pull from. And it's like fine. And the other end always bunches. (laughs) <laughs> and it's like 50 50 for me and I can never remember so I'm doing all these little like gumdrops and whatever and I keep bunching some of them so I'm just trying to be a really good steward of my floss and when I bunch them I'm like okay I'll just take the three and a half minutes and just bobbinify it because I have just boxes of skeins of floss that I have yet to my my uh my stash in where is it this my stash, my, I have a couple of these and my stashes are getting really depleted, but I just haven't like sat down to fill them back up. I have all the colors. They're just. Right. <laughs> I don't want to do that part. I want to do the stitching part. I don't want to do like, I don't want to do the, the bobbinating and all that stuff. I just want to stitch. <laughs> I'm, I feel the same way. Do you, have you tried the little bobbin twisters? I have not. It's, I haven't. I, I, I wouldn't oh, I recommend it. Hand. Same. I even got the bobbin twister thinking like, this will make me want to do it. A, a tool to help me. It doesn't speed it up really. I don't think it does because you still have to I feel to like that's just careful. an extra step mm-hmm. because yes. then you got to like get it on there and then you got to put it on there instead of like, okay, I just can do that. Yeah. So, and you have to be just as careful. So it's like, you might as well just hold it. I don't know. Oh, it's there's, I do. It's funny when it's organized, I take a lot of pride in it, but it just takes a long time to get there. My goodness. Yeah. <laughs> and especially with like kids and a job and who wants to take the time to bobbin when you could just get to stitching. So I validate your choices. Mm-hmm. Tell us what you do for work. You mentioned that you, uh, that you and your husband both work and we talked a little bit about zoom calls before we start our interview that you're on them all the time. So what do you, what do you do for work? I am a communication specialist Ooh. in the automotive industry, <gasps> which sounds a little bit fancier than it is. Um, I, hey, I say lean in if it sounds fancy. It's yeah, fancy. Um, <laughs> I run Twitter and Facebook or oh, cool. Twitter and LinkedIn for my company. And then I also do graphic design work too. Hey, so very we cool. create a monthly yeah. newsletter and I work on that. And nice. Update the website, basically anything in the communications arena. Awesome. So, and, and that's just for, uh, you know, general exposure, customer, uh, like, interactions or is that mo- is that internal for your employees and company who's who's kind of oh, your primary who are you catering to so the company that i work for is an association so we have members oh great so okay. we are mostly it's communicating to members but we also very cool um, yeah we host a lot of events too Ooh. um that non-members can come to so we're communicating to the non-members to come to our events to hopefully awesome. make them become members 
So, so that that sounds really I love I mean because we we have a lot of that too both with like reaching people who are interested in stitch people versus like the stitch people community so that's that's really cool do you have a an interest in the automotive industry and cars in general are you a a car person or is it just sort of the skill set matched and now you're doing it you know what I mean like what tell yeah tell us about that the skill set match (laughs) fair I um I went into this job. I've been there about three years. Um, and I really knew very, very little about uh, cars and the automotive industry. I still know very little <laughs> about cars and the automotive industry. Um, if I won't, I will not lie and say it's like a huge interest of mine. Sure, yeah. But you know, it's it's also hard to keep up with. I mean, if you oh, are not a hundred percent in all the time things are always changing yeah. and there's new things and new, you know, um, a lot of like the electric vehicles and all that right. kind of stuff is coming. So it's a lot of it. I won't lie. goes whew, right there. Um, <laughs> but I try, I try very hard to, um, appear as I, uh, as I'm listening and, um, <laughs> that I'm understanding. Um, <laughs> I love it. I commend your commitment. Is yes. there anything about, the automotive, uh, blah, blah, blah. I, I say that five times fast, the automotive industry. Is there anything about the automotive industry or cars, automobile technology in general that you found particularly surprising or interesting? Or unexpected even? And if it's a no, that's okay. I'm just no. curious. <laughs> not really. Fair I, enough. It's terrible. It's so no, terrible. it's not. I, you know, I mean, it's no. <laughs> Fair enough. I hope my work well, never sees this. <laughs> well, it's like you said, the um, you know, I'm sure I'm sure that people who are obsessed with cars might not be interested in how to best utilize social media for their needs. You know what I mean? So it's like you need you need somebody who's interested in in each facet of doing business as much as the subject matter of the business itself. You know, there's a difference between um, you know, it, like and and I think this is actually a very pertinent subject for a lot of crafters because a lot of crafters think, oh, I'm a quilter, I'm a crocheter, I'm a cross stitcher. I'll sell my stuff on Etsy, which Etsy or a um, you know a booth at a craft fair or something like that. That's one thing. And if you're able to sort of stick to that arena, that's really great. But if as you start to maybe expand or if you want you know, to think about customer experience and your packaging and your logo. And if you're going to have a social media presence and, oh, all of a sudden you're making money over certain, uh, you know, taxable brackets. So it's like, okay, well now I need to register as a sole proprietor or an LLC or an S corp or, okay, and now I need to file quarterly taxes and give myself a W-2 and, oh, okay, well now, I mean, and then you're bookkeeping and then you're doing accounting and then you're doing marketing plans, which is essentially, you know, social media is marketing. So you're doing, and all of a sudden you're running a business and you're not just making quilts anymore. You know what I mean? And so I think it it is, it's fun. I'm just saying, I I don't think you need to apologize at all because it's a good thing that, you know, any industry has experts within their domain helping them, you know, in the ways that they need. We, uh, we have Teresa on our back end who, She's been with us since 2017, and we hired her under the title of, like, administrative assistant. And she she's really good at spreadsheets, and she genuinely enjoys them. And she kind of was like you, like, I am I know this sounds crazy, but I really like administrative work. She just is really good at and interested in being organized, and, like, that's exactly what we needed. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, so it's a good thing there's, there's a place for us all at the table. Yes. <laughs> yes, well, and definitely, I mean, um, at my company – in, in the automotive industry, I would say in general, it's a little bit older. You know, mm. we're starting to move into like the younger people, like most places, you know, you're starting right. to move into the younger people taking over. Right. And a lot of people don't understand or use social media very well. So, right. you know, they needed someone who understood it and understood why it would help and right. who it would cater to. So, yeah, I have to. I'm admit, doing my part. <laughs> I, well, good for you. I mean, it's good. It's I. I could probably derail this entire podcast and bore 100 percent of everyone to pick your brain about LinkedIn because, to be honest with you, I just don't get it. 
I get it as a place to have kind of your professional resume and make general networking connections. I think their angle is interesting where as you connect with people you know, then you can see, you know, if you find somebody at a company you'd like to talk to, you can see like, oh, we have a mutual connection and they could introduce us like that. That's interesting. But as far as utilizing it as its own content platform, just over my head, over my head. I mean, I mean, it's probably because I'm self-employed at a crafting business and as opposed to like. I was just going to say <laughs> crafting is not the. No, nope. that's not the. Uh, that No, that's not going to work. But now, I'm sure if I was in an industry. Yes, automotive <laughs> or like, you know, one of the. I, we have a lot of friends who uh, the local university has a great uh, accounting, pro like, uh, you know, nationally renowned accounting. And so there's a lot of people who go to, you know, the PWCs and the Goldman Sachs and the, um, oh gosh, you know, the big four that I can't even think of. And I'm sure they do a lot on LinkedIn. But anyway, I think it's just fascinating. And I have to admit, like, I'm starting to feel really old because... Like, I know TikTok is a thing and Stitch People needs to be on TikTok. Okay, I know this. I've known this for over a year. And it's not that I don't understand TikTok. It's not that I don't understand the utility. It's not that I'm afraid of like jumping in and learning it. I just kind of don't care. And that's when I'm like, oh no, I'm getting older. <laughs> no, no, but and, and one thing, I mean, this is really turning into like business 101 type of stuff, but one of the big things with social media is you don't have to be everywhere. I mean, right, and it's right. not, it's not important yeah. to be everywhere. I mean, obviously Stitch People has a huge Facebook following yep. with Facebook their and Instagram, community yeah. and Instagram is huge. So yep. what do you, what are you hoping to get out of TikTok? If you're right. not, Just, you know, if you don't exactly. think you need it, don't go to it. I mean, exactly. and that's, I love that's that. a really big thing with a lot of businesses, even yeah. small businesses, they think they need to be everywhere. It's like focus your energy where it needs to be. Yeah. And, if and to the place working, that best suits you. Right. And so if Instagram is working and Facebook is working, yeah. stick with that and put right. all of your energy into that. Don't yep. stretch yourself thin to be on totally. something. Well, need. that's one of the reasons we haven't yet, because it's just, just what you said, spreading yourself thin. And again, I think for, for those who do any sort of Etsy, cross-stitch or otherwise, or you know their own websites, I think it is valuable to know. It's just what you said. You focus on, I, I like to say it's a healthy combination of what is best for your business and your niche with crafting that's going to lend to the visuals. So the Instagrams, the Pinterests, the Facebooks, but uh, but also to what like you enjoy and what you like and what you're good at. And so if you like doing silly videos and you want to keep up on TikTok, like great. I just don't have the time to like keep up on the trends and then repeat them myself and do the little sound bites. And I, I know it would be fun. I know it would probably be really entertaining for our audience. And maybe I will able to like pass off some responsibilities so I can incorporate that. But we definitely have had that discussion of like, look, what we're doing works. Maybe we'll get there eventually, but we don't, we, you know, it's, we got to prioritize where we're spending our time, you know, so. Well, and I, I started a TikTok for my stitching business and awesome. I've stitched like, or I've done like three videos, but it takes, TikTok takes a ton of time, especially if you're not used to it. Like, if, mm -hmm. and I'm not, cause I too am starting to feel very old with things. Like I had to <laughs> text my 18 year old nephew and be like, how do I do this on TikTok? So it's like, I feel I'm like, okay, well I'm on there, but I know how to use Instagram better yeah, <laughs> and I right? like Instagram better. So I think I'll just stick over on Instagram. <laughs> yes. Yes. So uh, I just heard a little nugget. You said with your stitching business. So do you sell cross stitch stuff? I Tell do. I sell about it. people portraits. Huzzah! Um, basically, uh, I received the book in the mail and created my first stitch people within um, like a week. Oh my gosh. And Good for you. You're like gave, a poster child. I love it. <laughs> it wasn't great, but, um, and <laughs> I, gotta gave start it somewhere. To, I gave it to a friend for a wedding Aww. and within like two weeks, I put out a little note in a group I'm in on Facebook and said, Hey, if anyone would like one of these, I will do it for just, um, supplies and shipping. Ooh. Cause I just wanted to keep trying it. Yeah. Have and a good excuse to practice. 
So I, I got an overwhelming response. So I said, okay, I'll take six people. I remember I called them my six guinea pigs <laughs> and I created these six portraits and then people just kept saying, Hey, I want one too. I want one awesome. too. I want one too. And then it just kind of snowballed. So, um, it's been three years I've been selling and, um, I've learned so much. Like I look at my I always feel bad for my first guinea pigs. I don't, I want to go back and I want to be like, <laughs> I can I read your portrait? Um, because I just, and you know, I still hear from these people. I love them. They're up in their Aww. houses. They, you know, for an outsider, they don't see it how a stitcher sees it. You right, know, they right. see something they can't create and, yeah. you know, or they don't want to create. So they sure. love it. But yeah. I have, I look at someone, I'm like, oh gosh, could I redo that for you? I'm so sorry. It looks like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love it. And um, I love, like I have mentioned, I just love cross-stitching, but how many cross-stitches can I hang in my house was kind totally. of my thought process. Right. So I needed to do something that I could give away yeah. or sell and s- selling ended up working. So um, I love it. I Very am. Very cool in a very hurried Christmas state right now, which is, again, you said you're not sure when this will, will, uh, go up, but you know, it's November 2021 and it's almost Christmas time Mm -hmm. and there are Christmas orders that need to be done. So, you know, what kinds of Christmas orders are you saddled with? Are you doing full portraits or like the ornaments that, that people are kind of into these days? What is, what's your Christmas landscape look like right now? (laughs) It is both. So, okay, cool. um, I, I start taking my ornament orders in July and everyone Good thinks I'm you. a crazy person. No, you are not. But I'm still working on them. And it's yep. not like I got a hundred orders, but I'm a full-time employee at a, I have a full-time job. Yeah. I'm a full-time mom. And then I stitch. So it's like, I need that much time right. <laughs> to get them yeah. done. So um, I only have a few more ornaments left, but I'm oh, working on some full size portraits right now, which of course takes a little bit longer. And I'm yeah. working on my largest to date right now. I think there's 16 people in it and it's in a hoop. So it's not even like, oh, you could just spread them out. It's like, how do we get them in a circle? So right. are you adding any uh, florals or anything to that to fill it out? Or are they just wanting the family in the hoop? Um, just the family. So I kind of, I did like, I did a layered family here, a layered family okay, here, a everybody family, in like and then a layered units. family. So it's like, oh, okay. someone was like, oh, is it a clock? <laughs> no, I guess it could <laughs> be. <cute. laughs> um, but yeah, so it's kind of just in a circle and they're kind of smushed together kind of in the middle. It's so almost, almost to me, tough. that rings of like a little family tree kind of a yeah. You know, all around. I love that. That's great. No, I think it's great to get ahead of the holidays. People don't realize. Now, I I I have mixed feelings about when you start to see like Christmas decorations up in stores in August, but as far as handmade holidays go, whether, you know, that's Hanukkah or Christmas or even Thanksgiving, like you got you it's like you said, if you have a full-time job, if you have kids, if you have hobbies, if you have a social life, you know, you think, oh, I, it'll, it'll only take a couple hours, but it's a couple hours over the course of a few days or a concentrated, you know, amount of time. I tried, um, I had a friend who had a very beloved dog pass away very unexpectedly. And uh, I tried for the first time sort of one of those realistic embroidered pet portraits just to mm-hmm. kind of see it took me an entire Saturday. Like, and I, I, I was lucky I didn't imagine. have, I, I didn't have anything to do. And, and I was happy to have just like a creative Saturday. It felt sort of like a luxury because I haven't had a Saturday without, oh gosh, meetings or chores, or, you know, anything. But it's often, uh, in my experience, and I don't know about you, but sometimes it just takes longer than you think it will. So it really, I think it's very smart and totally not crazy to get ahead of it. Christmas in July, yeah. why not? <laughs> and, you know, as much as I love stitching, there are days when I don't feel like picking yeah. it up. You know, I'm tired yeah. and, you know, the work's been busy or the kids have been crazy and I cooked dinner late and the kids went to bed late and I'm just not picking it up. Right. So, you know, what could take me a week sometimes takes me two or three weeks. So I, um, and last year for Christmas, I was really 
rushing at the very oh, end and it was very hard. stressful so yeah. this year this year i i have a calendar i'm like this week is this Ooh, one and this week i'm like now have i stuck to it is the real question <laughs> but i'm close and that's important that is um, good but yeah so it's um Spencer sent me a tidbit about planning. I don't. I didn't mean to interrupt, but before we move no, away from that, the uh, the t- I can't remember who wrote it. Gosh darn it! Uh, Spencer's been on a reading kick lately, so I can never remember when things are from. But it was this. The the whole idea, paraphrased, was we can never know. Like you said, sometimes things just take two weeks. Sometimes you get to dinner late and you're not getting to stitching. We can never know the curveballs that are going to come down. So in a sense, making a plan is ridiculous because we literally can't predict the future. But the whole notion is that it, it's the planning of making the plan that's important because it forces you to think through potential curveballs or like, oh, I see, you know, maybe the girls have dance class. And so Tuesday nights are later for me. So I probably won't stitch on that Tuesday. So I really got to block out that Wednesday. And so you sort of, it forces you to anticipate things and you just have to accept that even your plan that you've made probably won't go to plan, but it's going to go more smoothly than it would have had you not done it. And I really liked that because it sort of takes the pressure off of executing the plan perfectly because that's impossible. But but through the planning, you're a little more prepared, which is good. So right. k- kudos exactly. to that I calendar. Totally that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying, you know, and yeah. I'm doing pretty good. Like I said, I'm I'm getting there. And, you know, the mail takes so long now that it's like, you got to oh get these gosh. things. With, you know, there's these deadlines with the post office where I'm like, I do not trust that. So I'm wanting yeah. to send all these much earlier this right. year, especially. So it'll get done. Yeah. It'll get done. And I will... Done, shipping but. is uh ship we're really struggling with shipping right now we um uh spencer it was this actually just last night he was running some shipping scenarios and he looked at me and he goes uh we have some family in southern maine so he just randomly threw in a zip code for for maine and said how much do you think it would cost to send two diy books to maine and i was like two diy i mean they're, they're pretty thick books so i was like oh it's a couple pounds i guess so I was like, I don't know, maybe like twelve or fifteen dollars. The estimate was twenty five dollars to send two books across the country, and that was just like normal priority mail. Like, takes a few days to get there. It just blew my mind. And so, we've been talking about like, good, good golly, do we change our pricing? Do we change our shipping? But you know, it's just getting so crazy. And I'm not exactly sure why. I I think it has to do with the pandemic, but I don't know. Like, that's what I would have to guess. But, and then, you know, and also it's hard to know what to do because everyone is used to getting everything two day free shipping from Amazon. So, you know, when something takes five days, you're like, where is my package? And it's like, okay, well, remember back in the day before Amazon was around, everything (laughs) took five days to get to you. So Right. Because like, if you were to drive a car from California to the East coast, it would take, even if you didn't stop, it would take like five days. Remember how right. just like <laughs> physics works? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I understand yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> totally. It's, and it's hard. And that's, you know, that's another thing too, when you turn a craft into a business is, you know, just managing customer expectations and customer satisfaction and communication. And I guess it would help to be a communications expert. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. You know, I, my, one of my worst the thing I'm probably the worst at for my business is the finishing. Mm. So I like to stitch. I like to do it. And then I put them in a little pile and they stack up until oh. I go and sit down and put them in their hoops or their frames or whatever it is. And I struggle with it so much. And I, you know, I always feel bad for my customers who will message me and be like, oh, did this go out yet? And it's just like sitting in my little pile and oh, I'm still within like my time <laughs> right right I, I have I have a very big time window yeah. for that reason yeah exactly yep. but I'm like oh okay I guess I gotta go and do all those so you know it's just and then the shipping all then takes you know three or mm-hmm. four days on top of that so it's um Managing the customer's expectations. Yes. Well, and I love the way you talk about your process. It really sounds like you are self-aware and you know yourself, which I, I'm the same way. Like, could I, when I was like big into doing the actual portraits, kind of before we got into the patterns, I was like, yeah, I could do a 10 day turnaround on a portrait. Like technically I should be able to get an order, 
have one or two days for follow-up questions and designing, have a few days for stitching, finish it and go. But like I know myself and I like to have the option of not stitching one night or to have the option to just set it aside and finish it later. I got hung up on the finishing too. I... I would always, uh, we got to the point where Spencer would do it. I would finish stitching and he was like, I don't care, I'll do it. And he'd just like listen to a podcast and he'd like iron it out and wash it if the edges were gross. And like, you know, he'd cut it and put it in a frame, take a picture. It was the best because something, it got to the point where I would almost get like angry about it for some reason. Do you, what is it, yes. what is it you think that, because yes, I, I don't could know. never put my finger on why I, I truly hated it. It wasn't even that I didn't enjoy it, but it was like, ah. I just hate it. No, I feel I feel the same way, and I think for me, part of it is um, it's it's time. I mean, it's time yeah, consuming it to get them where they go. And then when I'm finishing, I'm also I write a thank you card, like mm -hmm, I handwrite yep. a thank you card to all my customers, and then yep, I got to wrap it with tissue paper and tie it, and I got to get in the envelope, and then I got to print out the shipping label, and then I got to do this, and I got to do that, and so it's it's not just, it's not just finishing for right. me. Cause when I finish, I do it all. Like yep, I, yep. I finish it to sending. So, you know, and for me, part of it, and I know it sounds so silly, but that uh, requires me to go to a different area in my house. Ah, so my, yep. it, we actually have like my little stitching, finishing station in our bedroom. Cause we have a very small house. So it requires me to leave the people I'm around in the yeah. living room and go and do this. And I can't have the kids in there when I'm doing it. Cause I'm ironing and they want to yeah. pull those iron and all this stuff. Right. So, you know, it's just, it's finding that chunk of time that I can be uninterrupted and do it, which yeah. is sometimes impossible. So yeah, that's a really good point because yeah, you have to, you have to iron it. You have to uh, sit at your computer and make a shipping label. And yeah, definitely. I hadn't even thought about that, that it, it is, uh, I don't know if this sounds basic, but it's just simply not as comfortable. <laughs> you no, know, it's, it's not. You, you don't get to sit in your living room around your, your family. You have to like, it's like, oh, it's not, it's not fun. <laughs> it's not as fun. No. And I mean, I love seeing it when it's done. And, right. You yeah. know, I, um, I back my stitches with, um, like vintage hankies, like when they're in a hoop. Fun. So I absolutely oh, that's love. that's such a cool like, idea. I have like this. I gave, gave my secret away to everyone. Now everyone will be at a state sale stealing all of my vintage hankies, <laughs> but I have like a bin, big bin of ones I bought at estate sales. And so it's fun to like pick through and kind of like pick one that I think feels like the yeah. stitch that I did and stuff. So I, you know, that's a fun little detail. Things. That's a good idea to try to make it more fun for yourself. Yeah. I like so that. like that part's kind of fun. And I like writing my thank you cards and thanking them for, you know, letting me do right. this and, you know, telling them parts I enjoyed, but it's just another step, you know, and yeah. I, I just want to stitch. Like, that's what I <laughs> right. want to do. I feel, I right. kind of feel the same way um, with setting up to make, like yeah. drawing out my pattern is not my favorite part. It sometimes takes me a lot of time to get motivated to yeah. draw out my patterns and stuff. So I always I the same thing that you said with Spencer I always tell my husband I'm like I gotta get you on one of the ends of this I either <laughs> need you to write, to draw my patterns or to get everything ready to get shipped because I don't want to do both <laughs> I'm I like I just want the middle part and yeah. I'm like who can I hire to do that for me am I, I big enough like... to hire someone hey I don't if, think so. <laughs> if you you know maybe though I mean I have a friend who works for like a local person who does, I want to say, I think they're an artist. And so they make their own like greeting cards and prints and stuff of their art. And she will go over, she's got three little girls and she goes over from like 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. like a couple times a week and puts, uh, puts all the stuff in plastic sleeves. Like that's, you know, and, and puts together the little boxes of eight greeting cards with envelopes you know and puts a little lid on it and and it's just because it's just something that needs to be done uh mm -hmm. for for that type of business and she's like I love it I listen to my crime podcasts I don't have kids touching me and all I have to do is put stuff in bags and it's great <laughs> I'm like hey right. there you go it's it's nice to sometimes have no you know just no real like um 
you know, it's, there's nothing life or death about that. You know, it's not like a huge right. responsibility. You just go and it's little. I was thinking too, we, we could, should start like a massive cross stitch family portrait network because I've talked to some people who designing is their favorite part. And then they're like, then it's hard for me to stitch it. Or people who, uh, like, I really love like the details of stitching versus like just getting the cross stitched you know the skin tones of the faces and the pants and the shirts it's like fine but then I really like doing the hair or adding little jewelry or adding little you know details um doing the any sort of embellishments and so it's like we could get somebody who loves to design and somebody who loves to just cross stitch and then somebody who loves to do like the kind of embroidery details on top and then somebody who likes to finish we could just start this like giant nationwide assembly line and everybody just does their favorite we need someone who likes to pick out blonde hair colors because oh gosh, that is yes. the worst. Oh, and then so someone, hard. I need someone who likes to do uh, pet faces. Oh, that is tricky. I don't mind doing the bodies and mm-hmm. I love mixing colors and getting them right. But those faces, man, That's I am hard. tempted to just tell my customers, sorry, you can't have a face on your dog anymore because I'm <laughs> not no doing it. <laughs> no faces. Well, it's hard. But the it's faces, hard to get the eyes and oh, the eyes, tiny oh. little space and that and you know it's so funny with with the pets it's like one tiny thing on their face really changes how they look right, so right it, you know there's it's so important but it's or if the french knot yeah. doesn't lay just right and you have like a googly eye going like wonder it's like, like oh, you have to cut it off over there like isn't your dog's <laughs> eye shooting off that way right, I thought yeah, it was. <laughs> I think in a picture, I saw that sometimes. (laughs) Or what I also find too is doing little, um, tiny little, you know, that you've got a little nose and then the little line between the nose and the lips, I guess, mouth. And then if you, if you, if you're not careful, they can look grumpy really fast. It looks like a little frown, Mm -hmm. even though a lot of times, especially with cats, but dogs too, uh, the mouth will point downward a little or be flat, but for some reason, when it's a representation, it, it it's such a quick little change to make it look sad. <laughs> yeah. I had a cat like, the oh, other day, God. or no, I had a dog on a stitch I just did not too long ago. I could not make that thing look happy. I felt so bad. Like, I just, like this dog, it, and the dog looked joyful in photos, yeah. but I just could, I, I had to like take things out. And then the more you take it out, it's the phrase. worse it gets. Yeah. And then the, the French knots won't stay in because it's too uh-huh. spread out. I'm like, I'm never, I'm like, no faces. <laughs> no faces on pets, everybody. Sorry. Oh, never I feel again. Your pain. I feel your pain on a very deep level. Oh, my goodness. Abby, what do you like to do while you're stitching? Is it mostly sitting out, you know, in, in the family area, hanging out with everybody and watching shows or playing, you know, family time? Watching TV, mostly. Um after the children go to bed, uh, my husband likes to play video games. Oh, fun! So, um, and we we only have, I mean, we have two TVs in the house, but one that we congregate around. Sure. So sure. he'll play video games, and I'll listen to podcasts, but oh, we'll fun. still be in the same room. So um, that happens. But usually, TV shows. We watch a lot of Netflix and Hulu. And love it, love it. Everything. <laughs> I find it's actually really fun to watch somebody play video games. Um, Spencer enjoys watching me play Tetris because he says I'm 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 weirdly good at Tetris and he he says that like I approach it just so differently than he would like he'll see a shape and where he would put it I never put it and he's like I just like learning how your brain works and he plays this uh, I, uh real like video game fans are gonna hate me right now on Nintendo Switch right now 2021 there's a great Zelda game that's newish whatever the latest one is and Spencer will play that and it's fun to like watch him like run around and fight the things and like just his choices like it's almost like watching a movie but it's interactive so I don't know I think it's I think it's fun Uh, what kind of podcast do you like to listen to um I have just recently got on to like the true crime okay which I mean everybody loves that but um I listen to that and then there's a few others that just like um I don't know if you want me to be naming other sure, podcast yeah. names, but I love Never Not Funny. It's this Ooh. guy named Jimmy Pardo. He's a comedian, and um, they've been they've been doing this podcast for like fourteen years. Um, I love so that. like you could never just like listen from the beginning because there's <laughs> sure. too much. But um, they just talk. They have guests and stuff, mostly like um, TV stars and things like that. Um, so I love 
I love that one. I actually found that one through a Saved by the Bell podcast that I was listening to, where this awesome. girl went through all the episodes of Saved by the Bell and talked about them. Um, and then the new uh, crime one I'm listening is is called True Crime and Cocktails. Ooh. And it has um, Lauren Ash from Superstore. You've heard of that show? Okay, yeah. And it's her and her cousin, and they just talk about true crime. But what's cool about theirs, too, is they talk about not cool. I mean, it's crime. It's terrible to say cool, but right. they talk about celebrity crimes as well. Oh, so interesting. sometimes with true crime, it's like, I don't know the people. So it's kind of yeah. hard to like get into it, but they do both. So some, okay. you know, I listened to one about um, Princess Diana, oh. which then rabbit holds me into oh, yeah. the crown. And now I'm watching the crown Ooh. and, or well, I just finished it. And then it rabbit hold me into now I'm watching Downton Abbey. It's like the whole it. thing is just really spread out very <laughs> wide. But yeah, so those are really true crime and cocktails is what I'm currently really that's, into. That's interesting. I like that. I like that a lot. Um yeah, it's always fun to hear uh I've never heard it like never not funny. That sounds funny. I like that sounds like something right at my alley, but there's so many it's hard these days to know where to start, especially I feel like streaming TV, it used to be kind of Netflix and Hulu. And now it's Netflix, Hulu, BritBox, Peacock, um, HBO, Disney+, Plus, Apple TV. Like it, there's so many that you hear about a show. Well, first of all, where do you watch it? And then, oh, and I think even stars because I was watching um, – uh, Outlander on Netflix, but the latest season is only on stars. So I have a friend who's like, Oh, just do the free week trial and binge it. But I'm like, I don't know. So it's hard to, I, I actually get a uh, decision fatigue and like decision overwhelm. It's like when you go down the toothpaste aisle or de the deodorant aisle, it's like, why do we, why do we need this many choices? I just want to have clean teeth and not stink, you know? So yeah, that's, I totally get it because yeah. we just, we were watching the crown and we finished it. And we were just like, okay, well, what do we watch yeah, next? What do we watch next? And we ended up going back to Frasier, mm. which is like one of our very favorite shows ever yep. that we've watched a billion times that we started from the start because yep. we just couldn't decide yeah. what to watch next because it's totally. just, there's so much. We have done the same thing. We've watched How I Met Your Mother, I think twice. The Office is always on repeat. We're our, our second time through Seinfeld now. Um there's just shows that like it's known and you know you're gonna like it and you know that it's good and so it's like oh just we'll just do that we just started the um oh it's called miracle workers i can't think of what it's on where is that at <laughs> i you know what i'm gonna google it uh miracle <laughs> workers it's a comedy series they're only 20 minute episodes which i like because that's like low commitment for me it's on tbs so we watch it on hulu it looks like you can watch it on Hulu or maybe on HBO Max as well. I don't know. That's weird. It says Hulu. But it's um, it's about – it's kind of one of these like heaven-y shows. It's, it's about the group of people that work at Heaven, Inc. And Steve Buscemi plays God. And Daniel Radcliffe is – the head of the answered prayers department and uh and it's all about like it's just like a cute little take on you know life and the afterlife and just if heaven was kind of a corporation if it was run the same way that you know and like god has an executive assistant and he's kind of going through burnout and that's why the world is having a hard time right now because you know he's the ceo and he doesn't have any good ideas and anyway it's it's pretty cute but uh but it's it's it is a bit of a risk to like start I don't know start something new and what if it's not good and what if you don't mm -hmm. like it I don't know so and how, how do you have I'm you really, oh go ahead sorry I didn't mean to I'm like a really I'm like a completist too so oh. even if I'm watching a show that like mm -hmm. gets really bad especially like in later seasons <laughs> I keep <laughs> watching a lot. it until it's over and uh. it's so it's so disappointing because you sometimes you forget how great it was at the beginning yeah, the right. ending is so terrible so, um, my husband's not like that. He will, if it's bad, he's done, but I'm oh. like, I have to finish it. I started it. <laughs> I need to know what happens with these characters. So I love that. I love, and I love that you're like two sides of that coin. That's a fun, a fun balance. Well, I hope, well, you said you mentioned, uh, you finished the crown, right? Or at least as yeah. far as it is. Okay. Yeah, we did too. I, I loved it. I think it's so beautifully done. Yeah. And you know, it's so funny because I'm not, um, I would not say I am a Royal family enthusiast sure, like sure. I don't I don't really care yeah um, right <laughs> they're not my they're not my people like yeah, they're not right. my queen not, and, yeah not our mother and all that stuff they're not yeah I don't really care but I 
got sucked in. I mean, yeah. that I was like, oh, this is very good. So yeah, yeah we, and I didn't think I never would have thought for a million years that my husband would have liked it because I was watching it without him. And yeah. he came home one day and it was on and he's looking and he, I can tell he's getting into it. And I'm like, did I just lose my daytime show? Because <laughs> I work from home. So I have TV on all the time. Right, he right. goes to the office. So I have shows that I don't watch with yeah. him. And I'm like, I just lost my daytime show, didn't I? And he's Brett. like, yeah, I want to, I want to watch this. I'm like, oh, <laughs> you're killing me. But yeah, it's so good. It's so, yeah. it's so well done. And even if you don't like, you know, royal family stuff, it's kind of like a soap opera yeah, because it, apparently it they are soap opera. Right. So well, and I appreciate on. that they, I just feel I don't know. It's easy to other people who seem to like have it all. You know, you're born into the royal family. You have got all this immediate wealth and fame and recognition. But I think they did a really good job through the stories of, you know, the various characters, the queen and her sister, and then her husband and then her children and really digging into um, the how difficult it is. And it, it makes you feel a lot of empathy for a, like just the expectation and the pressure and the duty. And I had no idea. And even if there's a crumb of truth in it, it really breaks your heart that like Queen Elizabeth, like her dream was to just like be a housewife and have horses. Right. <laughs> like she yeah, yearns for she... this simple life mm -hmm. and she can't. And it's and so funny because her sister, like her sister wants what she has. Yeah. And it's like, well, and she always says, I would give, I did, I didn't want this. Like, this yeah. isn't what I wanted. So, right. Yes. It does give you, you know, a different look at right. how hard, I mean, I wouldn't want to do it. Right. Like, certainly yeah. not. I and mean, especially I, the relationships too, that you can't love certain people. You can't get divorces because of the ties with the church of England and da, 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 da. Like, whoa, it just, oof, it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't seem, doesn't seem great to me. No. Yeah. <laughs> And also very beautiful and glamorous. <laughs> yes, gorgeous. I love like you said, the it's a soap opera. In that show. I love the costuming oh, in the show. Everything's so beautiful. Pretty to look at. It looks wonderful, but yeah, it's probably not that great. Yeah. Pros and cons, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Well, Abby, it is, I can't believe how time has just flown by. We are sort of like to the end here, but before we officially wrap up, I'm going to throw some more favorites at you. We've got some, uh, you know, podcast and TV show recommendations, but I would love to know at your core, um, did you ever, well, I, regardless of if you ever played an instrument or not, do you have a favorite instrument, favorite musical instrument? Um, I probably would say the piano, which I okay. did play. Hey. Um, I think that the piano is just, it can be beautiful. It can be like, rock it can be country you know it can just yeah. do it, i feel like it can do everything and seamlessly right but right like you can't just throw a saxophone and in, into anything saxophone <laughs> is not always a good choice <laughs> <laughs> that is that is true uh, do you have a favorite celebrity a favorite I'll, I'll even narrow it down a favorite like actor or actress I don't, I, I don't know if I do. I, my favorite, uh, I will say my favorite musician is Dave Grohl because uh -huh. I really like to look at him. Um, <laughs> and he's up. really talented and seems really cool. So yeah, I'll there you go. go. Okay, that. favorite musician. I love that. Do you have a favorite vacation you've ever taken? Um, I've been on really great ones. Um, I, I went to Spain, which was amazing. Um, but our family vacation spot is, and some people think it's kind of, you know, just eh. We go to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina oh, every single summer, and it is it is my happy place. I've been oh. going since I was born, so I don't care what other people think about it. <laughs> I love that. Hey, I've, I've never heard anything negative about Myrtle Beach. I think my mom went there uh, when, when she was young before they moved up up to uh buffalo but yeah i've yeah myrtle beach it's a beach it's a it's beach warm. Yeah, it's exactly. lovely what's to, what's to knock on it? i love that do yep. you have a favorite animal i love dogs i don't want to own a dog but i love dogs oh, I, I love that i have a puppy voice that when a puppy comes <gasps> by me i'm gonna use it but um I don't want one if that I think that's always strange for people but right. I love them. I will know, know your limits. It's a it's a commitment for sure. Do you have a favorite color? I really like purples and grays. Ooh, any particular types of purples? Any shades? Light 
I like lighter ones or like more to mobs. I don't oh, like, okay. um, like a, um, like I don't want a Barney purple. Sure. That's, sure. That's not the purple I'm going towards. <laughs> Pur- purples that have a little bit of that red in it. Uh, mm-hmm. the, 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 yeah. Mo- like you said, mauve, that's gorgeous. Um, do you have a favorite smell? Campfire. I say Ooh. campfire is a good one. Ooh, I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. Okay, here's one for the the for the cross stitcher in you. Do you have a favorite floss color that's different than your favorite color generally, or the same? Or a mama a moth, um, perhaps. I feel like I'm like the most boring person ever, but I love <laughs> um in the newer colors like the zero through thirty five. Uh-huh. They have um, all like the tin colors, the grays. Oh yeah, I feel like they're the truest grays that grays are um, hard. The BMC that they have. Yeah. Um. So I really love those, and um, there is like a mauvey color that I love, and I can't think of what Perfect. the number is right now. But yeah, I love it. But it's one that one. when you work with it, you're like, yes, it's so pretty. <laughs> it's the one I always use if I'm doing any um, Harry Potter inspired items. Perfect. Um, Gryffindor inspired <laughs> yes. item. Um, and anytime I'm doing like a nice shawl on someone, like for a woman, I always yeah. use the same mob color, like mobby color. Beautiful. I love that. Well, what a uh, happy note to end on. Abby, thank you so, so much for chatting today. It was so fun to get to know you. I feel like I could have chatted for another hour about all things business and entertainment and family and all the things. So is I'm there anything Facebook if you need me? <laughs> oh, perfect. I was going to say, is there anything, uh, you know, anything else you want to add before we sign off? Just, you know, I mean, as so many people tell you, and I know that you hear it all the time, but just thank you. I mean, it's really, you've, you've. Hello. Hello. <laughs> we lost you. <laughs> And I don't know what happened now. It will not let me connect on my computer. So I just did an audio. Oh, that's perfect. (laughs) We'll just, we'll be able to, uh, to, to wrap you right up. Um, the last thing I heard you say was thank you, which is so, so kind of you. And of course, you know, I, it's, it's one of these things that I feel like, uh, I feel like stitch people has been built. Um, I feel like stitch people has been built as much by the community as by me I really have sort of felt like a like a a shepherd almost a steward if you will of all things stitch people where it's like it's just sort of built on um on people's ideas and needs and creativity and it's like yeah let's let's all sort of up level together one step at a time and you know we're getting more creative and we're doing more techniques and we're adding more stuff and and so um it's definitely been something that has been my pleasure to watch grow over the years but to also uh just be able to kind of like serve the community and what everybody needs and uh yeah so I I do feel like it's a a very team effort so (laughs) very symbiotic it's so great you know I it's the community that's been built is just so wonderful and um I love that you and Spencer are really open and honest about how everything's going and you're you know, you're not hiding behind anything. You're, you're around and you, you know, you answer things in the, in the community and yeah. you, uh, you know, you like, you know, whenever, if ever you like my stuff in the community, I always get so fangirly. I'm like, oh my God, I'm <laughs> I need to stuff. be in the community more. I apologize. <laughs> I get distracted and I'm at the end of the days, I'm like, oh, I didn't do Facebook again. It's like, it's been like a couple of weeks now that I have, I just forget to log into Facebook and I just, Anyway, so thank you. I need that reminder because I love yes, to see what people you know, are doing and it's important I, for me to see too. Yeah, and I think I mean I think people understand that too. You're running a very busy business. So yeah. I think that people get it, but it's still nice when when you or Spencer pop in. And right, right. So well, yeah, I just thank you. <laughs> thank you. It's it's been a pleasure to chat with you, Abby, and uh, we appreciate you so much. And for sure, everybody listening, be sure to say hello to Abby in the community when you see her around. So thank you. Thank you. Seriously, I... 
loved every second of that time I just spent with Abby. I hope you did too. I hope you felt her love and passion for stitching and her creativity. I think she is so multi-talented and just am so impressed with everything that she does and is and the way she tackles her communication, go figure, and all the facets of, of her business. It's so great. So thank you so much for listening to today's conversation with Abby. Thank you for listening to the Stitch People podcast. And thank you for enjoying conversations with Stitch People like you. I'd appreciate it. If you haven't yet, please take a moment, subscribe to our podcast, like it, leave us a rating, leave us a review. It really helps us out. And if you'd like to be featured on the podcast, you can go to stitchpeople.com slash podcast. And on that page, there's a link to a form you can fill out and let us know that you'd be interested in having a conversation with me. If you have any feedback for us, we want to hear it. Please send us an email, info at stitchpeople.com. You can check out everything that Stitch People has to offer, cross-stitch patterns, books, merch, and all the cool things at stitchpeople.com. And please connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. We'd love to see everything you're up to and give you a big digital high five. Lastly, I want to thank all of you in the Stitch People community for your support of us and your positive and cooperative encouragement of one another. I'd also like to thank the incredible Stitch People team for making all the magic happen behind the scenes. Our fully licensed jazzy tunes were created by Jonathan Boyle, and our sound designer audio mixer man is Brandon Yost. Have a wonderful day, my friends, and happy Happy stitching. The Stitch People podcast is a production of Beanski LLC and Stitch People. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved.